Sure, you don't need 20 cores and 40 threads to work on 4K video, but we thought, eh, why not? Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. It might surprise you to learn that the systems we use here at the PC Perspective offices aren't always using the latest and greatest hardware. Much like uh, we think other production uh, studios would require and people that are actually using systems for real work, most of the systems we do uh, video editing on, photo editing on, writing, they tend to be a little bit older only because we find stable configurations we want to stick with. Uh, and that was the case with our video production system that Ken was using for many years, actually since sometime in 2011. We had built a system based on uh, the X58 platform with a Core i7-990X uh, processor and it. it was a six core hyper-threaded CPU. Uh, and that system with 24 gigs of RAM and a single 240 gig SSD carried us through the world of 1080p quite handily. We also had a Quadro, uh, let me peek down here, 5000, a Fermi based NVIDIA Quadro card powering all of this stuff, right? And so we did our 1080p videos and every video you have seen with the exception of just a handful was all, were all produced and edited and encoded on that hardware. Uh, a couple months ago, we started going into the world of 4K and getting in some video, uh, 4K capable video equipment, the Panasonic GH4, for example, and we quickly realized that that hardware was not capable of keeping up with the demands, right? So uh, even though you could maybe view 4K video, it was a little bit choppy and scrubbing through it on a timeline was nearly impossible to do. And then obviously when you're encoding 4K video, it's just going to take longer. And we were pegging out all 12 threads of that CPU at 100% every time we did it. So we started looking at our upgrade options. The first uh, decision, or the first idea rather, that Ken came up with was like, oh, all right, let's go with an X99 platform, uh, an eight core, 16 thread system. Uh, but we kind of decided that even though there's IPC improvements, uh, from the Nehalem based 990X to, you know, something like Haswell E, um, adding, you know, 33% more CPU cores and threads isn't really going to get us the boost that we really needed. So we started going down the realm of, okay, what we really want is a multiprocessor system, something with a lot of cores in it. Uh, for our live streams in our recording system, we actually already use a two 10 core Xeon based platform. That we've been very happy with it allows us to do a lot of real time encoding when we do our video streams. Uh, and it's been uh, a workhorse, workhorse for us here at the PC's perspective offices there. So we decided, okay, that's maybe the route we want to go. So we started exploring different options. Um, and one of the things that came up was, okay, let's, let's look at the processors that we had on hand. We happen to have a couple of Xeon E5 2680 V2 processors. These are still their uh, Ivy Bridge EP based parts. They're still $1,700 if you tried to buy them. So we thought, okay, this is uh, a valuable asset we should take advantage of. Let's find a system and build around it. That is a 10 core, 20 thread CPU. So combined, we had 20 cores, 40 threads of processing capability. The decision was, okay, now what do we do? Do we go uh, buy a system, buy a motherboard, um, find a case that fits the uh, rather large form factor of these multiprocessor kind of server workstation motherboards? And uh, I was talking with our friends over at Supermicro and they kind of walked walked us through, it was like, okay, what boards do you want? And they came back with another idea was, how about one of our bare bones systems? And this is what we got here. This is the Supermicro 7047A-T bare bones system. It is built for uh, that classification of processor. It is a chipset based on the C602 Intel chipset, which is the same generation as the X79. So again, not the most modern up-to-date platform, but new enough that we were going to get the performance we wanted um, with a couple of, of things we had to sacrifice, right? So this is a $1,000 to $1,100 bare bones system. It comes with your motherboard, your power supply, the case, even the CPU coolers, fans, everything kind of pre-installed and pre-attached. All you do is add your processors, add your video card, any other accessories you need, and you kind of uh, go about your business. Um, in terms of other components that we added, obviously we had those Xeon E5 2680 V2 processors. Uh, we have, the, the, by the way, those processors have a base clock of 2.8 gigahertz and they go up to 3.6 with turbo. Uh, we have a Quadro K5200, which is kind of a cutback GK110 base Quadro card, 64 gigs of DDR3 ECC memory in here. Uh, and then for storage, 
this was one of the things we had to make a sacrifice on. Really what we wanted to do was take advantage of new PCI Express NVMe SSDs like the Intel uh, SSD 750 series. Unfortunately, this platform does not support booting off of NVMe. So to kind of work around that, we installed the uh, Windows operating system onto a 120 gig ADATA SP610 SATA SSD, just kind of a, a normal, standard, low cost, solid state drive. And then we installed the uh, 400 gig Intel SSD 750 to work as, uh, you know, this would be where all the Adobe Premiere works uh, gets done, all the files, all the projects, swap space, anything that needs to get done there, although with 64 gigs of memory, you probably aren't going to need a lot of swap space. Uh, but it is the primary workhorse. Really, we only boot off of the 128 gig SSD. Um, so you've got $3,500 for the processors, $1,000 for your bare bones, probably $1,200 for that quadro card, $1,000 for that quadro card, and then your storage options are, are going to be up above and beyond that, right? So obviously this is a, a pretty hefty investment for us in terms of rendering capability and performance that we get. Uh, other features that this bare bones offers, Ken was the one who put it all together, so he pointed out that, you know, the, one of the benefits of having a bare bones system is that it's all kind of neatly packed together. Cables are routed well, bundled up together. The only additional power cable we even had to deal with uh, was the six pin cable for the add-in quadro card. So right, so you kind of pull that one out, plug it in, everything still looks nice and neat. It has um, modular fans, kind of like a server design. This is a 4U rack mount system that you can turn up vertically, right, essentially. And those fans kind of just pull out. You don't have to worry about cabling. You can move them around. It ships with two, I believe, in the system. Uh, you could add more, I guess, if you want. Uh, but he had just kind of moved them around so they were more properly uh, installed for the, the hard drives and stuff that we needed to, to keep cool. Um, hot swappable uh, drive cages up front here. There's a total of eight bays. I think half of them are attached to SATA and half of them are attached to a SAS controller on the motherboard. Uh, plenty of PCI Express slots. Uh, like I said, it comes with the CPU coolers, which is a nice touch. You don't have to worry about that. The coolers are seem to be high quality and very quiet. They have no problem keeping all 10 cores of each CPU. Uh, temperature is quite low. And it's easy to work in and it's quiet, right? So it's one of the benefits. It's a big case. If you can see it, it's hard to tell from this particular video angle, but it's deep. It's a very long chassis. Uh, and, and part of that is because of its for you, for you kind of rack mount heritage. And also it just makes it easier to work in as well. And so you're able to keep all of that horsepower uh, contained in a not too noisy. You don't have like traditional server turbo tornado style fans uh, buzzing up noise levels, if you will. Now, in terms of performance, this was obviously, you know, we, we installed everything on this. We took some 4K uh, project files we worked on and immediately could tell a difference. We could now scrub through stuff. And probably a lot of that is as much PCIe storage as it is the processors. Uh, we get a huge advantage across the board on everything that we do on our encoding platform now. Uh, a couple of quick benchmarks, for example, in terms of theoretical peak performance improvements, you look at something like Cinebench 15, which is a highly multi-threaded, just cranks on all the CPU cores and threads. Uh, the, the old system had a score of 804. The new system, a score of 2,515. So a 3.12x improvement in peak theoretical compute performance. Uh, and if we looked at Adobe Media Encoder encoding a 4K video project that we had on hand, uh, we saw a, about 60% speed up in the actual encode time. We went from a 35 minute encode time for one of our videos down to 22 minutes, right? So obviously you're not gonna see a 3X improvement in that, but it's also important to note that on the old system with the 990X, all six threads, all six cores, 12 threads were maxed out 100% utilization. Uh, whereas on this system, we we're at about 60% CPU utilization. So clearly a lot of headroom for either improvements in software or to be able to do encoding while doing other things in the system, which was something we didn't really have any capability uh, to do at all. So uh, that is kind of a, a summary of what we're working with now. So now all the videos you see, including the one that we are working on here, we have to take this off the table and actually put it back in place there before it'll happen. But all videos now that are run and produced uh, and edited are done so on this machine here. And we are more than capable and ready for our upgrade to 4K video equipment. I would do want to thank Supermicro for providing us uh, with this bare bone chassis uh, and making the recommendations for us. It has worked out wonderfully for us. A couple of caveats, right? We didn't have NVMe support on this platform um, and we didn't have some of the newer stuff like maybe Thunderbolt, USB 3.1, capabilities like that that you would really want aren't really included on this. So we had to uh, 
work with work within those kind of regulations, right, or those rules. Uh, but with all the PCI Express slots provided by the two processors and the bare bones chassis and the motherboard, uh, we have more than enough room for add-in cards should we want to add any more capability into it into the future. So again, thank you to Supermicro for that, and thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.